right. Mic check, check, I'm good. So I'm Max Ron, Max, Max Ron, CWB Association Welding Podcast, Pod, Pod, Podcast. Today we have a really cool guest, Welding Podcast. The show is about to begin. Hey, my name is Max Ron. Welcome to this week's podcast. Uh, as always, we're going to try to have uh, lots of fun with our guests and do a half hour spot here to promote the Canadian Welding Bureau Association and the Canadian welding community across Canada. On today's show, we got Alicia Buddy, who is from somewhere in the east. Alicia, how are you doing? I'm well. Doing pretty good? Yes. Uh, where are you from? Where, where are you calling in from? Um, about 45 minutes from Toronto. Which direction? Um, east. East of Toronto. So is there lots of stuff going on out there? It looks like everything's pretty cool out in the Toronto area. Yeah, I mean, COVID's kind of put a hold on a few things, but I think the fabrication side's pretty busy. That's good. That's good. So tell me about yourself, Felicia. Like, uh, you seem pretty young. How old are you? I'm 26. 26. And how long have you been welding? Uh, my dad taught me around 11. So your dad was a welder? Um, he has a metal fabrication business. Okay. Yeah, so uh, I started more of the artsy side of it. Oh, yeah, okay. You know, that's cool because I suck at that. I'm, I'm like, not artsy. I'm, it's just last interview I had, guy does amazing stainless steel art, and I, I can build things really well but I'm not so artistically minded. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. <laughs> That's like a whole other skill. Yeah. And, and you know, it's cool. Cause my dad was a welder too. And uh, he, he used to be a foreman at a shop and that's how I got in into the scene too. So it's, it's in your blood, eh? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. It's pretty fun. It's a fun trade to be in. Yeah. So like you're 11 years old, your dad's showing you how to, you know, make some sparks and stick some stuff mm -hmm. together. And like, yeah. at what point did you start thinking, Hey, you know what? I think I might do this like forever. Um, it wasn't until I was about 23, 22, 23. Um, I actually went to school for communications. Um, and I was there for three years. And then going into my third year, I hit my head and I had a concussion. Oh, yeah. And I was, yeah, so I couldn't return back to, um, back to the university. I was still pretty swollen. So uh, my doctor suggested taking a fun course just to keep my brain going. And so I thought I would take um, a welding course and I, um, I took it more as a hobby rather mm. than a career, but then I fell in love with it and I stuck with it. You know, and that's uh, so much of the story for a lot of people that are welders. And, you know, it's interesting. Some of the people that I consider to be some of the best welders I know were people that didn't really plan on being welders. Mm -hmm. You know, like my dad was a welder and I did it when I was in high school to, you know, make some extra cash. And, you know, I thought it was OK, but I went to university like I had a whole different plan in my head of where mm -hmm. I wanted to go with my life. And I thought I'd, you know, I, I went to school for philosophy. I wanted to be a professor someday and I had all these ideas. But then life life happens. You know, you got bonked in the head. I had a kid, you know, so <laughs> <laughs> and then all of a sudden it was like, oh, man, I got to make some real cash here. So. <laughs> yeah. And my parents did not want me to go into welding. You know, that's interesting because I was going to ask you that because, you know, that's something that's really hopefully got a change going forward is this idea that, uh, you know, parents don't want their girls going into one of the, the skilled trades or one of the hard trades. He definitely realized how rough the trades could be. Mm -hmm. And I think he was a little nervous. <laughs> yeah. Was he worried about you getting hurt or... I just don't think my parents pictured me getting that dirty every day. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, there's the safety part of it, too. And okay. and what about the rough part? Like the the rough people like you always I always hear about that. You know, like it's the guys are rough or the people are rough. Have you had much uh, issues with that? Um, Honestly, I haven't had that many bad experiences. My dad wouldn't hire me. Um, out of college uh, he said no you have to learn how to make it in the real world first mm -hmm. so I went off and I got a job myself um, and I worked at that company for three years uh, two and a half years um, I started as a welder and then I became their inspector and yeah um, 
I mean, there's rough looking guys. They definitely looked intimidating. But once you get to know them, they are the sweetest people. Yeah, and a lot of that is is just uh, you know the industry image versus reality, right? Exactly. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, I I fell into it too. You know, like I'm all tattooed up, and and you know people will be like, "Oh, you're a welder. Or you're kind of rough." It's like I got a degree in philosophy, dude. Like I'm pretty soft. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so then so you started your career. Your dad wouldn't hire you. You went and worked for a couple yeah. of years. I'd imagine that uh, you're probably doing MIG in a, you know, some type of fabrication shop or something like that. Then you got your inspection. So le level one inspector? I did, yes. How'd you like that? Oh, I loved it. You don't do it yeah, anymore? Yeah, it's very interesting. And what I love about welding is there's, you can always grow. There's always room to learn and to advance in your skill. You know, and that's, that's it's huge. Like uh, the people that start in welding or even end up in welding, say in the middle of their lives, it's a huge curve that welding can take. It's a lot of different directions it can go in, even like sales or R&D or design or whatever it is. It's a it's a huge thing. Okay, so so then you went, you inspected, then you said you left the company. Where did you go from there? Yes, I my dad, I went. Um, so biggest thing is with the company was great but it was production work so it was the same thing every day mm -hmm. um which i wanted something more challenging so i had some interviews at a few companies it just didn't feel right and then um i pitched to my dad why he should hire me <laughs> <laughs> so um no it was great and then um now i'm the cwb supervisor for him Okay. Well, you're on the tools. It looks like quite a bit. It's great because everyone does everything. And so, so this is all custom fab? So if we're short a welder that day, I'll hop over. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. See, I, I got a job with my dad right out of school. Um, and I stayed with him and his company for almost 10 years, like nine years. But mm -hmm. I really felt like I couldn't advance because it was my dad like I'm kind of stuck so I had to get out <laughs> and do my own thing and actually I started my own company after I left there so it was kind of like yeah. and you know that's even its own its own bit because you know you run your own thing and then you end up having to go back into private industry and then back to your company and it's back and forth how long have you been at your company now uh since last November okay so not that long not that long your dad hasn't fired you yet not yet. I'm sure he he came close, but yeah. uh, no, it's pretty good. And uh, I'm in charge of hiring right now. We're hiring two new welders. It's crazy. Um, we've been so busy since COVID happened. We've been the opposite, um, like most companies. But you know, it's yeah, super we... interesting you bring that up because literally most of the welding companies I talk to are super busy right now. You guys are doing good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We hired two machinists last week and two welders this week. So it's great. So you We're a little overwhelmed. Yeah. So <laughs> now great. you as a, the hirer, tell me, what do you look for in a prospective welder that's coming to get a job from you? So you're looking yeah, for someone, a hard worker, passionate. What about hand skills? Like, Do you care if the hand skills are way up there or do you feel like you can train people? Yeah, I feel like you can train most people. I think it's just if someone wants to learn, that's the biggest thing. Um, but then I've also interviewed people who tell me they know it all and they can weld better than I can and blah, 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 blah. But that's not what we want. We want someone that will grow with us and teach, even teach us things. We love to learn. Um, but you know, it's more of a team rather than um, there's a leader and you do what that person says. It's we have the same goal to get the same product out and yeah. So what's the main product you guys produce then? <laughs> um, 25% of our sales are tire cutting machines. Okay. And actually 80% of the world's tire cutting machines come from our, our business. That's awesome. What's the name of your business? Give it a plug. Yeah, it's yeah, it's Buddy Manufacturing, B-U-T-T-Y. Which is your name. It wow. Is. <laughs> 45% is for aerospace, um, in a big aerospace company mm -hmm. we do a lot for. And then the rest is just random jobs people come in the door with. 
<laughs> well, and that's a nice thing. Like as a as a custom sh metal fab shop, I'm sure you guys have the tooling. That's really the investment that companies like that have to make. You're gonna have mm -hmm. some machining tools. You probably have shear and f uh, like you know brake press yeah. and all that stuff, which is and it, it doesn't get boring. There's no. always new problems to solve. Yeah, and that's awesome because you know as a skilled employee, you get to learn to use everything too, right? So have you thought about going back for like your metal fab ticket or anything like that? I thought about it, but I, I'm pretty content where I am at this moment. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to do more of the managing side of things. Have you ever looked into the blue seal program? Um, no, I've, I've looked into it, but, um, maybe in the possible future, I'll look into a little more. Yeah, it's, it's actually, you can do all of it online. It's pretty cool. Like I learned lots from it just in terms of, okay. of running business. Um, it's actually neat even the history of the Blue Seal program because it was like it was invented through like chefs because chefs often own restaurants. And then it's like, well, welders often own companies, you know. For sure. So with the Instagram stuff, you right. what happened? Like you you were working and then you just decided yeah. to get into Instagram or were you always into Instagram and then you started working? Yeah, so um when I was working um, at my old job, um, it wasn't very creative. And then so the after hours, I would go to my dad's work and build some of the more creative side of welding. Um, yeah, so I started just posting um, some of my pictures on Instagram just for basically family members to see. And then it kind of took off from there. And that's good. Like, uh, it's a certain type of Instagram audience that you get. You know, I, I follow a lot of stuff on Instagram. I post a lot on Instagram and there's like the welders that film their welds. There's the welders that film their art. And then there's the welders that film projects and do videos. And, and mm -hmm. there's the ones that just kind of like reach out. Uh, you, 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 you put a lot of stuff up. That's like fun. Like you look like you're having fun at work. I try. <laughs> and, and it looks like you <laughs> no, have. No, I mean, I, I try to have fun. I try to look like I have fun. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks like you have a partner in crime at work like you got you got friends I there. do oh she's amazing so she actually reached out to me on Instagram and because I put my location uh when I post photos mm -hmm. and she said hey I live 20 minutes from you do you want to grab a coffee sometime I really want to get into the trades that's perfect and so yeah it was amazing and um so this is still when I was working at my old company and I got her job at my old company. And then, um, yeah, she was great. She became certif a certified welder, I think, within less, uh, I think six months. Wow. Without any welding ex previous welding experience. Um, yeah, and then she joined my team just recently. And so she's she's not a Red Seal? She's on her way? Or she, what's her plan? Uh, I'm not sure her plan, what her plan is. <laughs> I think she's quite happy where she is good she's, um, and she's a good welder yeah oh she's a great welder awesome yeah and she likes it because some days we throw her on tig some days meg um flux core yeah and you know that's uh that's awesome like the instagram kind of create created a mentorship kind of position for you there where someone mm -hmm. could reach out to you that's something that we're really trying to push here with the like the new CWB model that we're kind of trying to figure out with the association is that all the all the old timers, all the old guard of welders kind of keep bringing it up that there's no um, there's no community, you know, like the community for welding is dead. And and I don't buy it. I don't buy it for a second because I look I at don't, Instagram looking at instagram that's right it's all there it's all yeah. there and people talk to each other people ask each other for help people post yeah. pictures up and and, and talk, talk about advice and jobs and all. and it's a huge community that just needs to get bitten into and i think you know someone like you my last guest and the few more that i got coming up are all people that are quite involved with the online social media because because that's the world that's really where the connections it, are it now is. yeah yeah I agree. All right. So we're at the halfway mark here. Uh, we're going to take a break for commercials and we'll be right back with Alicia Buddy. The CWB group is offering a hydrostatic testing course at our NISCU CWB training facility. This course is a must have for all personnel involved in the planning, execution, and inspection of hydrostatic testing. 
It ensures that everyone involved in any given hydro test will have the same baseline training and safety protocols across Canada. This course covers a wide range of topics related to pressure testing with a specific emphasis on hydrostatic testing of oil and gas pipelines according to CSA, Z662 and other applicable Canadian regulations. The three-day course covers the theoretical background and practical aspects of pressure testing. The hands-on practical exercises are unique to this course and individuals will learn how to calculate different variables related to hydrostatic testing. Course highlights include testing theory, establishing the safe pressure test requirement and environment, test setup and sequence, test instrumentation and documentation, practical demonstration of pig launching and receiving techniques, practical demonstration of burst test. Space is limited. Register today for the first Canadian-focused hydrostatic training course. All right, we're back on CWB Association Welding Podcast. Our guest this week is Alicia Buddy, and she's telling us her awesome stories of her life and her career. So we were just talking about Instagram before the break, and uh, we are talking about the community that, that's involved with social media. Um, do you feel like people reach out to you, Alicia, like on social media? Uh, oh, yeah. yes, all the time. Um, it's great. People worldwide um, reached out and asked me how I got into the field, what can they do to get into the field, what programs I took, um, even what machines I use. Uh, yeah, and, it's great. And do you find most of the people that reach out to you are women or do you find it's just like whoever? Uh, oh, I'd say it's mostly women. Yeah, there's like a comfort yeah. level because you're a, a woman doing well. I think so, yeah. You know, that's something that's... You know, obviously, I'm sure you're a part of a lot of, you know, women in trades programs and stuff like that. People probably reach out to you for that stuff. Um, do you ever feel like that's enough? Like, I don't want to be a woman in trades. I just want to be known as a welder. Or are you happy in that role? Both. I don't like to bull gender into it, but it's really nice when I get um, DMs saying, you inspired me to take this welding course. And I know you don't know me, but... Um, you're the one that gave me a push to move forward with my career in welding. Yeah, that, that's got to feel good, right? So it feels good. <laughs> and that's the or thing. when I get messages, I get messages saying, I want my daughters to be exactly like you, <laughs> <laughs> which is really sweet. <laughs> And, you know, it's like, and even your persona, your Instagram persona, which lots of girls uh, on Instagram right now are not doing the, hey, you got to be like some, you know, dirty Watch welder, you, you know, that <laughs> there's a lot of girls out there that are, you know, we can be fashionable, we can be, you know, women, and we can just do this how we want to do it. We don't need to fit into anybody's, you know, box. Exactly. So now that you're, now that you're there. I ran into you at Fabtech last year. Yeah, so much fun. It was crazy. That was nuts. Like, it blew me away. I've been to a few <laughs> big trade shows, but that was yeah. the biggest one. Mm -hmm. So how did you get there? How, what was your uh, path to Fabtech? Um, they messaged me, and they asked me if I would come and kind of represent Canadian welding side of it and be a social media spokesperson for Fabtech. So that was obviously, again, through Instagram or through... Through Instagram, exactly. That's yeah. amazing, you know. And uh, and so you're you're down in Fabtech. They, they, who puts you up? Fabtech themselves? Or did you go down through, like, the Canadian Welding Bureau or... Uh, no, it was Fabtech themselves. And did you have to do rounds and go see people and pictures and stuff? Uh, yeah, they, they were pretty relaxed. They just wanted me to go around, see if I saw any um, new interesting products and just put them on my story for social media. That's awesome. Just to try to get the word out there. Yeah. Because to be honest, I've never heard of Fabtech until they messaged me. Oh, really? Really? I was <laughs> yeah. like, uh, what do you really? want? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I mean, I, I've heard of Fabtech. My boss used to go all the time and brag about it. And I was like, finally, my turn. Because I've been to Canweld in Canada, which is very cool, but not that size. Not not that size. Yeah, I'm very disappointed that um, the Las Vegas one got canceled. Yeah, well, and Canweld in Canada got canceled too. I was actually yeah. supposed to be flying out to speak at that one. 
and mm. uh, I was pumped because it was in Vancouver, and I love Vancouver. So I was like, Beautiful. oh, man, yeah, and uh, that got canceled. But it is what it is. You know, we'll we'll survive, right? right? Yeah. So how do you feel COVID is affecting um, maybe some of the younger people coming up? Do you think it's going to slow things down, or do you think it's going to be fine? Um, Coming up from where? Like just getting into welding now, looking for jobs, trying to get into the industry. I think, well, welding's already slowed down in general for mm-hmm. um, the next generation. It's hard to find welders. No one's getting into the trades, I find. Um, I find a lot of people out of school, there's so much pressure to go to university, which is, I mean, I would never bash education. Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel like the trades are still put down. To go to college is still a step down. And I think we need to change our mindsets. And we need to realize that a university degree does not mean you're making huge money. Oh, yeah, Um, for sure. And there's lots of data showing that, like, I know the apprenticeship board released a bunch of information showing, like, you know, uh, three years of a trade and you're making, you know, 60, 70 grand and four years of university and you're making like 30, 40, if that. Exactly. Although we work a lot harder. (laughs) (laughs) Depends who you ask. Yeah. Or at least I should say there's moments when you work really there's hard. There's moments. <laughs> exactly. And the better you are, the hard, the less hard you have to work, right? True. Yeah. It's definitely an art. It is. It is. And what's your favorite thing? Like, let's let's do like the would you rather. Would you rather stick or mig? Mig. And would you rather mig or tig? Tig. But TIG over anything. Yeah, TIG is your game? Yeah, talk about yourself. Okay, so for me, I'd probably take stick over MIG. Like, I'm just talking preference. Mm -hmm. Um, Mainly because when I was younger, I worked in a cylinder factory where we had to do lots of, like, nickel and stainless and chromium. And you can only do that stuff with stick. So I had a lot of fun doing those exotic metals, you know? And yeah. then I'd probably go MIG over TIG. I'm not huge. Really? Into, I'm not huge into TIG. And I'll tell you why. I worked my whole career in heavy industry. Like I'm talking mm-hmm. like 10 tons and up. Right. Okay. Potash mines, uh, steel plants, stuff like that. So in those environments, you literally never TIG. Right. Mm-hmm. The only time you ever TIG is if it's some weird like copper, brass or silicone bronze or something like that. And so I would only get to take three or four times a year. Then by the time I got older and I got out, I became specialized in exotic metals. It's kind of been my game. And then it's like, okay, well, I'm going to try getting more into TIG and the thinner metals. And you know what? I'm not a big fan of working on like 16 gauge, 14 gauge. I'm like, ugh, I hate this. Like I wish... that heavy, you like the heavy steel. I like the heavy steel. I like <laughs> the heavy stuff. And you're not doing a one inch weld with TIG. No way. <laughs> and, and you know, it's funny. I see that on Instagram. I see that baloney on Instagram and I'll call it out. It'll be like yeah. a slip on flange with like a three quarter inch weld and it's all TIG welded. No <laughs> yeah. one is doing that. Like your boss would fire you if you spent three days doing one flange for sure <laughs> mig is the money maker like I, I think everyone just knows that right yeah that's the one that makes a company the most money and for sure tig is uh i'm like i mean i'm not bad at it i would say that my weakest weld is probably aluminum tig mm-hmm. what's your weakest weld probably this thing <laughs> the same yeah it's, it's and good. when you meet someone who's good at it you're like wow yeah you're so good at that <laughs> what's your strongest weld what's one that you know you can like just make it pop every time um aluminum mig yeah 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 just hot and fast and give her yep <laughs> <laughs> yep <laughs> pretty good <laughs> yeah it's pretty good it can be pretty. Do you do a lot of aluminum in your shop? Um, we do everything, it, and it, it varies week by week. Yeah. So, um, there could be three weeks that we're doing it, and then we don't touch it for two months. Yeah. But it all varies. Yeah. So then, brass tigs. Sorry, go ahead. Brass tig. Yeah, brass is tough. It's fun. It's, it's got to go in so freaking hot. Yeah. Do you guys use straight helium for it? Uh, I don't know. To be honest, 
Yeah, they're just that's the gas. I've done it, but I didn't look at I didn't look at the gases. Someone there's, just had it set up, and I yeah, I, I remember, played around with it. I remember going through that battle when we tried. We had never done brass or any copper based TIG welding in our shop and we got a big job that had to get a bunch of it done. So then it was mm -hmm. like, what do we do? And you know, you're like figuring it out. And I remember like we had to get like a straight helium or like an, a helium mixed gas or else it wouldn't blend at all. And I, I'll mm -hmm. always remember that battle. The things you learn yeah. when you get a weird job, you know? Exactly. So you're 26 years old. You're happy I with am. your shop. You're doing good. You're out and Very yeah, you're, 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 everything is solid. What's the yeah. game plan? You looking at maybe taking over dad's shop someday? Oh, I'm 100% taking over dad's <laughs> shop. I just got to kick him out first. <laughs> well, is he getting close? Is he old? I don't is he think young? he'll ever leave. He's 65 and he, he still works five days a week. Jeez. <laughs> Tell him to he enjoy life. I know. he love, But that is his vacation. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when yeah. it's new every day. That's exciting. Exactly. And did he yeah. start the company? Um. Yep. Him and his brother. Him and his brother. And what's his brother yeah. do? His brother is, um, he's more like the sales and design okay. aspect. And then my dad's the engineer. Yeah. So what's your dad's background then? Is, it, is he an engineer? Yeah, a mechanical engineer. Mechanical engineer. And does he have any welding skills of his own? That he, Like, is he pretty good? No. <laughs> <laughs> Dad's, dad's gonna hear this you know he, he could oh that's okay he knows he can tack two plates together and will the tack hold sometimes 50 <laughs> 50 i guess that's why he hires people to do it yeah and that's the team right that's the team member yeah exactly <laughs> okay and i only got a couple more questions here i, I want to ask you about the cwb what's sure. your kind of perception of the Canadian Welding Bureau. Do you have much think, involvement? Do you know anything about it or what what tell me what you uh, think about it? I have some involvement. Um I just remember at my old job, so once we once you are CWB certified, you got the CWB certified sticker, right? Mm -hmm. And you could put it on your hard hat. And that was oh, always the biggest show off. Mm -hmm. Like once you had that sticker, you knew no one could talk down to you because that proves that you are a good welder. Yeah, and, um, and you're certified across yeah. the country. You know. Exactly, yeah. So that was always a powerful thing that I remember. Um, once you got that sticker, you were good. <laughs> and you should see the students still think the same thing. Like, man, yeah. I got to pass the test so I can get that sticker. You just want that sticker. You don't actually care even about the card. <laughs> well, and, <laughs> and, and, and for the people that are listening that don't know much about welding, the sticker game is real right oh like, yeah like and you can't just put like any sticker on it's got to like mean something or else you're gonna look like a poser mm -hmm. although i have some pretty funny stickers <laughs> now now that you you got your certification and you're you're rolling and you're looking at taking over dad's shop you want to keep it where it is are you thinking big are you thinking expanding or I'm, growing i'm thinking he can expand it's just i think he's he's happy where it is um we don't advertise anything we do there. <laughs> and you feel and like you should? So... Pardon? Do you feel like you should be advertising? No, because we can't even keep up with what we have. <laughs> it's crazy right now. We just got a job for a thousand hand sanitizer stands that bolt into the ground for in front of stores. Because I guess people are stealing the hand sanitizer pumps. And it's a big problem. Wow. But... Wow. Constantly, people are just coming with, like, coming to us with jobs, and yeah, we can expand huge. It's just it takes a lot of effort to do that, right? Yeah, that you're looking at, like, either, are you going to expand in the same building, or are you going to buy a new building, or mm -hmm. how much stuff? Like, if you if you guys are running with twelve, that's not a lot. That's a like a nice small to medium sized barely. shop. Yeah, We're barely running with twelve. <laughs> and if you get two more, then you'll be up to fourteen. Yeah. And how how much of that is you on the floor actively welding too? Oh, I would now at first it was a lot more um, because I wanted to learn the products more. So mm -hmm. I was every day out there. Now I bet it's like sixty percent of my time is on the shop. In the shop. That's a good mix though. Even if you end yeah. up ever being the big boss, it's always good to get down there every now and then. Exactly. So when people say, you don't know what you're talking about. Exactly. <laughs> you know. Oh, I do. I do though. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I worked at a shop where this uh, engineer, his name was uh, Nick. And Nick was uh, the head engineer for like a huge division. But he had a thing mm-hmm. where he would send his junior engineers, the young guys, down on the mm-hmm. sh- into the shop with coveralls to be an, a laborer once every two That's weeks. That's smart, though. It is so smart. So he would send his... So smart. And he would just send his guys and say, put on your coveralls, you're going down today. And he wouldn't even warn them sometimes. And all of a sudden, an yeah. engineer would come down in his coveralls and he's like, well, oh, Nick sent me down to help you. So then you're getting him to run tools and he's watching how you're building it and how it fits in the jigs. Exactly. And, and man... Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. At my last job, there was, and the engineers were very intelligent people, but it was definitely a divide, the engineers to the shop, the shop floor workers, Mm -hmm. and they would design things that we couldn't possibly make. Yeah. Or they would design things a certain way that would take two days extra. They wanted it built a certain way that would take way longer than if they were just there and they realized this is how we build it. Um, it would be so much faster, but that's a great idea to have them mixed. mixed yeah, it's, I th- I, when he when I started working there and I saw that he was doing that, like I did, he didn't tell me. I was like the foreman for this area, and all of a sudden, this engineer that I had seen the day before came down in coveralls. I'm like, "What are you doing here?" And he's like, "It's my day on the floor." And I was like, "Wow, <laughs> that is solid." That was, then, he's probably he was so scared. Well, and you know, and and you push on them too because as they're engineers, so you're like, "Hey, go." grind that weld for four hours, for four hours. <laughs> here's here's the seven inch grinder have fun yeah. you know? watch their arms just vibrating yeah all right well you know i think that's it i don't know that uh, that went really quick is there any questions or comments you got any advice for anybody um, i think any advice is just always ask questions if you're not sure about how to do a weld or you know, um, how to do a certain thing, always ask questions because you're going to look more, um, I don't want to say like an idiot if you don't, <laughs> but, <laughs> but you, you know but you what just I'm said saying. That, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Never. There's no, stu- well, there is, there's lots of, stupid questions, <laughs> but, yeah. you, but it's better to ask to make sure because you would rather ask than make a $2,000 mistake on a job. I heard a saying once that it's better to sound stupid than to do stupid. I like that. Right, because if you don't ask, a- then you're gonna do something stupid. And if you ask and it sounds stupid, fine. At least you didn't do it. Exactly. Right. So don't. Yeah, and I say don't be intimidated. And everyone says, "Oh, you must be discriminated because you're a girl in the trades." But I haven't seen much of it, or I've just ignored it. <laughs> Yeah, and and you know, in a shop is also different than in the field because even as myself, like I, I'm I'm from South America, I'm a brown guy, and mm-hmm. and in a shop, I never really had any problems. Out in the field, it gets a little bit rougher, like out in the oil oil world sometimes, or yeah. you know. But still, like you said, you just got to stand up for yourself. And and you guys are the new generation coming up. All the old dum dums are going out with their <laughs> stupid, you know, mentalities, and they're retiring out. And I think the new generations coming up are a lot more tolerant a lot more educated you know connected yeah yeah it's funny because when I hired um the girl I work with and the shop the guys were like oh that's not fair you're just hiring girls and I said no I hire people that are qualified who are profitable <laughs> to make money doesn't matter the gender yeah it's about making money work. <laughs> exactly well, and it's been proven. Statistics show that uh, women especially excel in fabrication shops. Uh, with attention to detail and organization skills are huge. Mm-hmm. So that's yeah. all awesome. Well, cool, Alicia. I appreciate it. Your Instagram is Canadian underscore welder underscore girl, I believe. Yes. And that so is correct. when this uh, comes out, uh, you know, we're going to be pushing the, the online. So you, hopefully you can share it too. And for the people for sure. that are listening, um, thank you for tuning in and listening to this podcast. If you have any questions for Alicia, myself, or CWB uh, after the show, the, the information will be coming up on how you can get a hold of us and you can connect and keep this community growing. All right. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot, Alicia. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And take care. We hope you enjoyed the show.